Yes, uh, Shafiq bhai. Yeah, I think we can start because it's almost 4.37. I think hmm. we can start. Yeah. Okay, so like um, I'm just uh, uh, I'm being given the task of moderating this uh, this program where we have very two very distinguished people with us. One is Dr. Javed Alam from uh, governance, uh, um, from a Center for Budget and Governance Accountability. And other one is Dr. Khalid Khan from um, IIGS. And um, we will largely be focusing on budget, uh, uh, this year's budget, um, uh, this year's budget and how it is being largely it is being impacting on um, the Muslim community as a minority community here. So be before going further into the uh, into the uh, an introductory part, I would like to um, invite uh, our Shafiq Bhai to for the welcome address of this program. Shafiq Bhai, please. What you? Thank you, you Namur Bhai. Namur Bhai, good evening all. Uh, as you all know, Embor India Foundation is a Bangalore-based institution that provides uh, conceptual, intellectual, and motivational support to the marginalized session to get empowered by its own effort. Uh, and that uh, Embor India Foundation, uh, uh, minority budget allocation and its effectiveness or utilization has been always a major focus area for us. And we believe the close scrutiny of budget uh, is an essential is essential for ensuring adequate growth and participation for any community or all communities. So, uh, does yearly budget could ensure or provide good governance, improve socio-economical conditions, promote uh, employability uh, among the minorities, or uh, does the Prime Minister 15-point program or MSDP could ensure to create opportunity for education, employment? Uh, or improve uh, living conditions, economical conditions, and uh, prevent communal uh, riots. Is the budget allocated sufficient and are utilized properly? These uh, questions become more and more relevant as uh, the total expenditure report for minorities and a 15-point program or MSDP declines year by year. To shed more light into the present year allocated uh, minority budget or budget. We have two experts with us, Dr. Javed Alam from Center for Budget and Governance Accountability, uh, Dr. Khalid Kram Khan from uh, Indian Institute of Dalit Studies. On behalf of Ember India Foundation and IPSA, I welcome both of you and all the listeners to the program. Over to uh, Inamur Rahman Sai. Thank you, Shafiq Bhai. Um, I will not like uh, waste any time because we have two very distinguished speakers here. Uh, so I just, I, I just want to like uh, um, brief the introduction um, by saying that um, we always are like every, every form of life or every form of um, um, uh, governance always are functioned or driven by some ideals, right? We always try to reach that ideals we always try to set certain standards and try to reach that, right? And that's how progress development or improvement is being like, um, is, is actualized or realized in the society, right? Here, um, um, like within a context of like higher inflation rates, within a context of like, like uh, um, uh, context of higher in unemployability, these, these unemployability higher inflations are always um, some negative in signifier for our growth, right? Growth and development as well. So, and these, these indicators like unemployability or inflation, these are highly like, these are, this impacts the disadvantaged group in a, in a higher way than the other groups, right? So, and, and here, I think the ideal should be like um, given by um, hmm, uh, uh, either uh, I could say uh, Gandhi, like Sarbodaya, or Tolstoy, like unto the last, and or by John Rawls, who, is, who says that um, uh, the profit of any any uh, mechanism, state mechanism, should reach to the 
a least advantaged person in the society least advantaged and i can uh, there is no hesitation in saying that muslim community is one among the uh, ad least advantaged group or community in this country according to the such a report so uh, i would to, i would look forward to um, uh, dr javed alam khan and uh, uh, dr khalid khan for um, uh, uh, lighting or focusing on these areas and uh, and see how this budget is actually impacting the uh, muslims we can we can we can have discussion on other communities as well but uh, today's uh, program is being directed towards seeing that what the budget is how the budget is impacting the muslim community particularly so i would like to invite dr uh, javed alam khan uh, from center for budget and governance uh, accountability who is currently uh, associated with that uh, uh, think tank or kind of an organization who does policy analysis who does budget analysis and for transparency and, uh, and accountability for any uh, institution or any for the institution or the government who is uh, who has the responsibility to uh, provide all the uh, all the like uh, means to achieve uh, different uh, uh, means to uh, achieve the welfare in the society and dr javed alam khan has did his phd from jnu in economics he has numerous publications policy analysis policy papers uh, review uh, reviews book chapters i'm not going to like mention one by one of them but he has many publications policy reviews under his name and um, with this few words i would like to and 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 before uh, starting that or inviting him i just want to uh, uh, with the permission of the panelist i just want to uh, mention the uh, framework of the program like uh, every speaker um, will be getting uh, by and large 2 and 30 minutes uh, javed said will that uh, be enough for you like 20 to 30 minutes for yeah yes yes speaker. yes yeah enough, each enough. speaker and then we will uh, have a uh, question and answer session which will be having like around 15 to 20 minutes so i would like to invite uh, uh, first uh, javed sir uh, to present his paper please javed sir uh, shuk uh, shukriya inam bhai uh, and uh, empower india foundation and ipsa uh, shafiq bhai can you make me the host actually i have to share it this screen yeah sure sir now you can uh, share okay. assalam alaikum <coughs> So as Inam Bhai has uh, as Inam Bhai has mentioned that uh, the budget has come in a particular context where the country is facing a very high unemployment and there is a increasing poverty and rising inequality and also you know like uh, there is a decline in the consumption demand of the general population. But we know that you know like when we talk about the budget. So we should focus that uh, this government uh, is having the agenda vision of minimum government and maximum governance. So like you can say that uh, government has always tries to, you know, like uh, withdraw from its, its role and responsibilities and uh, always try to, you know, like uh, hide behind this slogan and mostly promoted the privatization. So in that context, uh, the focus of the government is that more uh, private goods should be provided, not the public good. Like uh, when we talk about the education, health and other basic amenities. So in that context, government is relying more or less on the private goods through privatization. And if we talk about the overall public spending, so we know that uh, this budget has, you know, already come after two phases of this pandemic corona. But uh, we, when we talk about the overall public spending, so there is a low fiscal space, low public expenditure in terms of GDP. 
further if we talk about the overall focus of the you know like uh, three sectors which we have uh, you know like uh, general sector economic sector and social sector and generally you know like uh, uh, the social sector is very much important for the human resource development so in that context if we talk about the budget so there has been a less focus on the uh, mm, on on the on the social sector and budget has you know like uh, uh, had very much focus on the capital expenditure under that uh, you know like uh, we can say that government is tried to a kind of you know uh, promote the private sector through heavy focus on the uh, capital expenditure in the sectors like port like airports like roads and also uh, you can you can say like uh, the budget has al also covered uh, two sector water supply and the um, housing so here we, we can say that uh, the focus has been much more on the capital expenditure but less on the uh, revenue expenditure we know that the capital expenditure is meant for the uh, you know like uh, creation of the new uh, product new activity and uh, through revenue expenditure basically government has to spend on the uh, salaries on the different kind of entitlements like uh, uh, pension mid day meal and other you know like uh, public goods so you can clearly uh, have this distinction that government tried to focus much on the capital expenditure and government is saying that we can solve the problem of rising in employment uh, increasing poverty through capital expenditure but here there is an argument that it capital expenditure is needed but uh, it has a you know like a long gestation gap it will take a lot of time but uh, in the immediate term government should have focus on the revenue expenditure also now i will move to the you know like uh, some you know like areas of social sector and economic sector like agriculture like uh, you know rural employment guarantee scheme uh, the sectors like education and health so if we analyze the budget so really in, if we analyze the budget for education health so it has not increased in terms of gdp though it has increased you know in the numbers but uh, if we take uh, the inflation into consideration so you know there is a no real increase in the bu budgets for the education and health and we know that we are underspended uh, in, in the education and health uh, we are not able to achieve the 6% of GDP as we, it, it was promised long back, even 3% of the uh, GDP for health. Likewise, Narega was needed more money, but uh, you know, like there has been a cut. Like agriculture, there is a decline in, 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 in terms of, you know, like a percentage of uh, total budget. So these sectors uh, have got hit. Now, if we talk about the, uh, the major uh, marginalized communities like uh, scheduled castes, scheduled tribes, and minorities, so these are the major, uh, you know, constituencies and groups uh, part of the social sector. So there has been a nominal increase uh, in the uh, allocations for the, um, if we can say, uh, the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. But uh, if we compare for the minorities, so situation is very, you know, like. Uh, Javed Sahib, yeah, your slides are not moving. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so uh, I'll, I'll move my slide. Uh, like uh, here in the slide, we can see, I argued that uh, there is a no, uh, you know, like uh, mm, uh, increase in the overall uh, budget expenditure. So we can say like, uh, you know, in, the, in, in this budget, in fact, uh, there is a uh, decrease, in fact. So here you can see this slide, sorry. Yeah, your slides are not moving. I think uh, you should uh, exit and come again. I mean, okay, slides are not moving. Okay, yeah, not so, moving. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So I'll exit then. Yeah, you don't need to exit from the meeting, but just yeah. Now it is moving. Now it is moving. Okay, it's moving. Eh? Yeah. Okay. So so here we can see you know like I I'll I'll go to this slide. Uh, total public expenditure. I think. Uh, it is visible. So through this slide, we can see that uh, from the previous year, there is a 1% of decline in terms of GDP. 
if we compare the you know like uh, overall public spending uh, from the union government uh, the, now uh, I, I i i will come to the main uh, strategies for the minorities which you know like was initiated um, uh, around 2006 7 so we as we know that we have 15 point program for minorities and uh, multi sectoral development program so these are the two main strategies and just I will explain that uh, under 15 point program, we have the uh, dedicated scheme for minorities uh, implemented by the Ministry of Minority Affairs and also the general programs like uh, the uh, programs like NHM, like uh, Samak Siksha Abhiyan, ICDS. So there 15% share uh, has to be given to the minorities. So 15 point program is covering uh, both kind of, you know, like scheme, general sector and 100% meant for the minorities. MSDP, you know that it has been renamed in 2018. So um, MSDP uh, now has become the Pradhan Mantri Jan Vikas Karikaram. So may, these are the two major, you know, like uh, strategies through which, you know, like budget uh, supposed to be allocated for the minorities. So I'm not going to uh, discuss much on the 15 point program. Uh, just I will uh, come to the major, you know, like departments, uh, which uh, Javed Sahib. Javed Sahib. Uh, I think Javed Sahib lost his connection. We'll wait for one minute. Shafiq, why can you like uh, call him once for like saying that? He's, he's joining back. He's joining back. Okay. Sorry, I think there is some network problem. So yeah, yeah. Now I have shifted to the mobile because okay. of that. So I am trying to connect, you know, like uh, with the laptop. But okay. I will I will I will continue my presentation. Otherwise, we will lose our time. So, <clears throat> so, so you know, like uh, if if we talk about the uh, total minister total allocation for the Ministry of Minority Affairs, so I would say that in 2013-14, um, we had around uh, we can say around uh, 3,700, and now we are in uh, 2000. 2022-23, so this allocation has increased from 3,700 to 5,000, around 5,000. And uh, ministry, in Ministry of Minority Affairs, whatever uh, has allocated, the ministry has not been able to spend the money adequately. So in that way, if we say that uh, the overall allocation for my Minority Affairs Ministry uh, has increased, so it can be said that it has declined over the time. If we, if we take the inflation uh, with the, you know, like uh, overall allocation of the Ministry of Minority Affairs, so it is not, it, it has not increasing basically. If uh, we consider just nominal increase of the Ministry of Minority Affairs, which we have uh, around uh, 5,000 uh, and uh, taking the, you know, like uh, the, the, the base of 2013-14, uh, so now it should have been around, uh, I would say around uh, 10,000, which is now around 
just uh, 5000 apart from that if we you know like uh, talk about the uh, overall you know like uh, <clears throat> uh, spending so even last years like last uh, you know uh, last last to last year's uh, actual allocation has been just 75% so even utilization has been you know like uh, very poor and uh, ministry ministry has is uh, you know like uh, has so many programs uh, i can say like uh, the programs related to uh, scholarship schemes so under scholarship schemes we have around uh, around uh, five uh, is, is schemes like uh, uh, these schemes uh, related to prematic scholarship postmatic scholarship and then the is the is merit means scholarship then uh, molana azad fellowship then uh, scheme for uh, you know like uh, <clears throat> overseas studies so we have uh, five six schemes and uh, a major amount of the you know ministries uh, is spending related to the uh, scholarship schemes only like 50 percent like out of uh, 5000 crore um, 2500 is going for the scholarship schemes apart from that we have this uh, jan vikas karikram so under jan vikas karikram uh, you, you know like uh, we are having around uh, more than uh, 7 to 800 blocks and towns and then districts and uh, under the you know like uh, the this program uh, allocation uh, was around uh, 1600 crore but uh, government of india has expanded the areas and coverage of the scheme but as, as per the coverage allocation is not increasing so this is the biggest challenge for under the uh, pratham mandi jan vikas karikram and this year uh, somehow allocation got increased so just give me one few minutes just i'll try to connect with my laptop so that i can show right. this slide also sure 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 sure, sure. just just a minute Okay, so <clears throat> this this year, uh, if we look at the allocation for the schemes, so Now I am audible. Are you listening? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I was here. So, huh. so I, 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 I was discussing about the oral allocation for minorities. So, like uh, now, we are left with only Ministry of Minority Affairs. And from this, you know, like uh, <clears throat> slide, you can see earlier uh, we used to have some kind of reporting on the general sector schemes you know like uh, like sarv shiksha abhiyan and uh, this uh, housing scheme pradhan mantri awas and there are other schemes also they used to report uh, some kind of allocation like 15 percent for the minorities but uh, after 15 16 they left you know like they uh, stopped reporting uh, 
on on this scheme now we are left with only the allocation for the ministry of minority affairs which is 5000 crore and if we take it into consideration and just you know like take the share in the total budget so it is coming around uh, 1.3 uh, 0.13% sorry 0.13% earlier if you see this so in this you know allocation it is showing that financial resources available for the minorities uh, share of the expenditure on minorities in the total budget but now we had calculated in 2016 17 after the ministry of minority affairs is not getting any kind of data from the general sector ministries so this you know like share got declined and now we have just 1.13% uh, share in the total budget for the minorities so <clears throat> this is the situation now <clears throat> i will move and uh, <clears throat> we ha uh, just uh, you, you you can see this slide so just uh, you know like we can see ministry has ministry was started around 2006 7 and uh, after that you know like uh, allocation uh, the in 2007 at allocation was 500 and uh, then it got increased gradually so i was arguing that even now we have 5000 uh, 5000 5000 crore but really if we take the inflation into consideration and also the nominal increase just 10% per year so the allocation would have gone to more than 10000 crore as of now so now we can see the allocation for other you know like ministries department of social justice and empowerment so even uh, if you take the population criteria of minorities we have uh, 21% of the minorities in the total population and scheduled caste you have around 16% nationally so here you can see like uh, the allocation for department of social justice somehow you know like uh, got increased uh, from 21 22 to at least 2000 more than 2000 crore likewise if you can take the allocation for the tribal affairs ministry again roughly there is a uh, increase of 2000 crore but you uh, if you talk about the minorities only 200 only 200 so there is a there is a kind of fiscal discrimination against minorities it is very much visible from this data actually now i will come to the you know uh, in other schemes so i have already discussed i am not going to say much about the uh 15 point program now it is not being reported so there is a no need to discuss again uh we have uh, the you know like uh, uh, these 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 ministries uh th these schemes uh, pre matric post matric merit cum means molana azad fellowship uh, interest subsidy on educational loan for overseas support for the students clearing prelim uh, examination so if you see uh, you you can you can have a look at like uh, from budget 2021 22 so under each scheme <coughs> there is a <coughs> marginal increase but there is a no substantial increase and out of 5000 crore roughly uh, 2500 crore crores are going for these schemes but there is a problem actually jo jo hum logo ko sabko dekhna chahiye the problem is in the uh there is a problem in the allocation but again there is a problem in the utilization so you can see this slide under pre matric scheme and post matric scheme and merit cum merit cum scheme so we don't have the you know like latest year data like like last year data but for 21 2021 financial year if you see the uh, allocation in utilization so for pre matric you can see the allocation was one Thousand three hundred thirty. Uh, you know, like in the first three quarter, like until December, ministry was able ministry was able to disperse only two hundred crores. See, and then under pre matric scholarship allocation was five hundred thirty five crore, but the release was just one hundred twenty seven. Likewise, same situation is in the merit cum means four thousand was allocated just. Uh, reimbursement rim, uh, reimbursement was the dispersal was around uh, 100 like 105 crore so 
in you know initial three quarters ministry has not been able to disburse the money so this is the sad part on the ministry that how you know like uh, the students are getting the scholarship whole academic year got exhausted or exhausted but even ministry was not able to disburse the money now the one more you know problematic thing has been that uh, always we say that we are not able to uh, you know do much you know like uh, Uh, publicity and awareness among the minority community and also we are not not able to provide the support to the students and colleges so that they can apply more and they can get the scholarship more but here you can see this slide for pre matric scholarship in 2020 2021 application was around you can see 90 lakh how much scholarship got awarded just 50 lakh and got there is a quota actually government has fixed the quota long back in 2007 it that fresh scholarship will be given just uh, you know 30000 so so uh, sorry 30 lakh sorry 30 lakh fresh scholarship quota for pre matric scholarship is 30 lakh around 30 lakh and you know like uh, for this 90 lakh application Uh, government has awarded the 50 lakh scholarship which include fresh scholarship and renewal also both now i will come to the uh, post matric scholarship again there is a quota of 5 lakh and uh, 7 70 lakh plus students have applied and they got how much uh, 6 lakh uh, 48000 students have got the pre uh, post matric scholarship same situation is here for merit cum means so here i will give one example if we compare it with the uh, other deprived communities so for pre matric uh, for scs sorry post matric for scs post matric scholarship for scs the quota for this you know uh, is this community is around 80 lakh just compare the limit 5 lakh is for minorities who have the population of 21% in the total population and scs are having 16% of the population but they are having the quota of 80 lakh and even 60 lakh uh, scholarship being uh, you know awarded if you take the allocation for this year for just post matric scholarship for my uh, uh, the scs dalis uh, so uh, you know like they have got around uh, 5600 for only uh, the post matric scholarship for scs so there is a big, big gap you know like uh, for higher education as we know that muslims are gradually picking up in the higher education but when we see the support so there is there is a very negligible support from the government so the, this this is the biggest challenge in terms of you know like uh, the scholarship in, in scholarship programs and now we we can see the allocation of other scheme so uh, as i have mentioned that uh, pradhan mantri jan vikas karyakram so here you can see the allocation for pradhan mantri jan vikas karyakram almost uh, it has been stagnant around 1500 1300 like that it is not increased but we have been able to increase the coverage so without, without increasing the allocation i think coverage is not sufficient likewise uh, education scheme for madrasas and minorities earlier it was with the mhrd now ministry of education but if we see the allocation so it got declined up uh, from 174 to 160 and uh, you know it there the, 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 in 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 i think 2015 16 allocation was around 400 crores so there is a gradual decline or because of that like many madrasas uh, who are having the Uh, modern subject teachers they are not getting say, the salaries for past 3 years this is the biggest challenge so now i will move to other programs so other programs are related to the skill development programs so we have skill development initiatives nai manzil the integrated educational and livelihood initiative then ustaz there is a program for upgrading skills trainings in the traditional arts and, and craft a scheme for leadership development of minority women is there there is a grants grants in aid to state channelizing agencies who those who are you know uh, utilizing the fund of the nmdfc then there is a equity contribution 
to the national uh, minorities development for finance corporation so here you know like you can see we we were we, we have been talking about the uh, huge unemployment and then inequality but you can imagine that ministry has not given adequate focus to the nmdfc and in many states the nmdfc uh, is almost defunct so these skill development programs and livelihood programs like are getting roughly uh, you can say 500 crore but the allocation is very less, less less for each you know like program skill development program you can see this year allocation got declined so this is the big, biggest challenge under the uh, skill development and livelihood uh, schemes and programs we have other programs for minorities like uh, research publicity monitoring and evaluation so again there is a problem and i have not shown you the utilization because i have already told that uh, in 2000 2021, you know, like whatever has been allocated, just ministry was able to utilize 75% of that allocation. So it has effect on every scheme. So I'm not, you know, like discussing the utilization rate in each and every scheme, but here you can see the scale of the size of these schemes. So for research and evaluation, ministry is not able to spend the money. So we can say that there is a less focus on the uh, awareness generation. There is a less focus on the publicity and uh, scheme the, the, there is a scheme for containing uh, population decline of a small minority community so the allocation has been more or less same under this program and uh, we are not getting any kind of evaluation report that how this scheme is working like hamara dharohar and conservation scheme there is a very small amount allocated around 3 to 4 crore but we don't have much idea about this but this research and research studies and publicity monitoring evaluation development scheme for minorities is not functioning well. Now I will come to the other, you know, like uh, uh, institutions which are part of the Ministry of Minority Affairs. So they, they have the special program for minorities, but there is a not much detail. Kaumi Waf Board and uh, we have, we had allocation of uh, uh, 21 crore in 2000, 2021 but it got declined. And again, there is an increase, uh, not increase. It was same in the 2022, 21, 22, but in the revised budget, again, it got declined. So, you know, like ministry uh, has also reduced the allocation mid-year, like the financial year uh, in 2021, there is a reduced allocation of five, 600. So again, it has effect in the revised budget as well. The most you know like important thing which need to focus given focus on this Molana Azad Foundation. Molana Azad Foundation got only one lakh this year. So I we don't know that how you know like uh, government has allocated this small amount and uh, uh, one journalist has asked to minister. So he told that there is a, some you know like error in the document, but uh, after that there is a no rectification no announcement that why they have stopped, you know, like allocation for the Molana Azad Foundation this year, because Molana Azad Foundation used to give grants to the uh, minority run institution for construction. And also they are running uh, the uh, scholarship scheme for uh, meritorious girls, like it is called Begum Hazrat Mahali scholarship. So the, the like uh, I, the last year it was uh, 90 crore, but this year we have just one lakh. So we don't know, you know, like this, this it, it has to be investigated that why uh, there is a, you know, like um, complete decline, complete stoppage of funding to this institution. So I, I think I have covered more or less the minority affairs ministry's uh, allocation and utilization. And uh, I would say finally, uh, that in concluding remarks that uh, there is a need for increase uh, of allocation for the development of minorities and it should not be less than you know like uh, uh, 10000 crore to begin with and uh, the 15 point program is not working on the ground so we need to strengthen the implementation of 15 point program through 15 point program the quantum of uh, allocation for minorities can be increased otherwise the single ministry can't do much i would argue that
the scholarship schemes already have mentioned that uh, there is a problem of less coverage uh, applications are you know like uh, uh, not you know fully awarded and uh, there is a huge gap like uh, more than uh, 1 crore like 1 crore uh, 10 lakh students have applied under the 15 uh, the pre matric post matric and merit companies and hardly 56 or 58 lakhs got the scholarship so Minister himself, you know, like announced in 2019 that we will give one crore scholarship everywhere, every year, sorry, every year. And now, you know, like uh, only 58 uh, lakh students have got the scholarship last year. So there is a need for increase in the coverage of the scholarship schemes. And one more thing that scholarship schemes have not been revised their amount of a, per student per annum whether it is the tuition fee or it is the maintenance fee. So that need to be increased, that need to be revised because, because of that, there is a less incentive for application, right? Likewise, uh, scholarship schemes are having the problem in terms of eligibility criteria, like income eligibility criteria. So even there is a disparity in the, you know, like uh, amount, just I will give example of the post metric scholarship for SEs. In that scheme, uh, the eligibility criteria for uh, parental income criteria is uh, 2.5 lakh and for minorities is 2 lakh. 2 lakh so, this is what we need to change. That should be revised, I think, immediately. Uh, further, you know, like uh, other areas of 15-point program like reporting has been, you know, like um, stopped fully. So we don't know that how much minorities are getting recruited in the different uh, uh, grade of public services and how much credit facilities they are getting. So again, the, it's, it's a big challenge. And uh, the scholarship program also having the problem in terms of uh, the online management. So the that should also be uh, strengthened. And just I will give one example uh, taking from the a post matric scholarship scheme that uh, this this year um, the post matric scholarship or SCs have a very unique uh, mechanism of free ship card. So free ship card is basically uh, a kind of uh, guarantee that after applying, uh, the website will provide the free ship card even if students are not getting uh, the tuition fee. They, even then they can be they can get enrollment in any institution as per their choice so this is a unique thing which has been introduced in the post matric scholarship for scs i think it should also be applied to the minority scheme likewise uh, we we have not done any kind of performance audit by cag of the you know like uh, scholarship scheme it should be done so means um, ministry should request to the CAG that there should be a kind of audit by the CAG. So I will stop here and uh, I can take questions after you know Khalid presentation. Mm -hmm. Thank you so uh, much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Javed Sir, for like uh, uh, exploring all the minute details of budget and showing that what are the things that is like lacking there uh, in uh, regarding the utilization as well as regarding allocation, right? And and both uh, kind of us, we are seeing that both are under, we can uh, headline it like the under allocated as well as under utilized, right? So thank you, Javed Saab. Uh, I will uh, uh, proceed further. Uh, and I would like to invite uh, Dr. Khalid Khan. Uh, Dr. Khalid Khan is uh, uh, assistant professor in Indian Institute of Dalit Studies. Uh, he's uh, like, he has, uh, many publications in and uh, project reports um, and um, like book chapters, uh, journals, as I can see from the uh, biodata. Um, and uh, without like without uh, uh, loss, losing any time, I would like to uh, uh, I would request Khalid Khan, Dr. Khalid Khan, to start his presentation. Khalid Bhai, please, over to you. Uh. Thank you. I, I'll first thank uh, uh, Dr. Javed Saab for his very insightful presentation. And uh, I think he's the best person for uh, speaking on this particular topic budget because he's expert on that. 
and uh, i should thank uh, also eif and ipsa for inviting me uh, in this program in today's presentation actually uh, i will not go into the details of the budget but, um, but uh, i'll try to uh, highlight the um, the status of muslims from the uh, empirical evidences but uh, based on secondary data and uh, uh, what i will do in this presentation i will try to, uh, to 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 get insight from the data uh, how far the budgets and the different heads which uh, 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 javed sahab has very beautifully explained how far these programs schemes and uh, different components uh, uh, captures the empirical reality of indian muslim society my my focus will be on the condition of muslim uh, um, of course because of the uh, the well known fact that uh, muslim are the most marginalized religious group uh, when we are uh, considering religion as a denomination in terms of measuring the backwardness and of course um, uh, it it doesn't mean that uh, uh, that we should ignore the needs of the other mi minority communities but uh, 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 the community like a cst and muslims who are un under should, uh, be, should get attention so that they could be brought to the mainstream uh, discourse before starting my presentation on the uh, on the on the status of muslims uh, i would like to draw some uh, some insights from the budget the recent budget to 2020 22 23 and uh, uh, i'll just discuss i will highlight few points from this uh, this this budget which uh, dr uh, javed sahab has already highlighted but for the sake of the presentation i will uh, repeat this uh, if we see the uh, the budget document the total amount allocated for the Min ministry of minority affairs is 5020 crore rupees no the the first question which is uh, uh, which arises when the 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 allocation to the uh, ministry of minority affairs how fair this uh, this allocation is and this is not specific to particular uh, for uh, to to budget uh, of a particular year the general question uh, or the general concern is that the amount allocated to the to this ministry is very very low if we see the total amount allocated to different ministries for example uh, if i i i see uh, the amount allocated to the uh, ministry of travel affairs this is a uh, 15 is close to 8% and uh, the allocation is uh, close to 8.5 thousand crore rupees the share of minority population in india including all the religious groups uh, is close to 20% and this ministry is getting only 5 thousand crore rupees we can compare the this the situation with other minorities also uh, other other department other ministries also for example ministry for uh, fishing and dairy products uh, for this uh, ministry the amount uh, yeah ministry of fisheries animal husbandry and dairying uh, the amount allocated to this ministry is 6037.31 crore rupees so minority ministry is getting less than the uh, than than amount allocated to fisheries also fisheries fish and element animal, animal husbandry so this is the first uh, 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 concern uh, we should uh, think about now uh, out of this 5020 crore rupees um, if we see the uh, the the structure of this budget uh, uh, across different heads uh, one may find that the uh, the major component of this budget uh, uh, it is 3074.9 74.9 crore rupees it is going for central sector schemes and projects close to 31 100 crore rupees 
is going for central sector schemes and project. For, if we further decompose this amount, uh, then we would find that uh, uh, nearly, uh, yeah, total uh, 2,515 crore rupees, means 50% of the total budget is going to the, going for educational empowerment. And within educational empowerment, uh, 1,425 crore rupees is going uh, for post metric scholarship, uh, and uh, no pre metric scholarship and uh, 515 crore is going for post metric scholarship it means close to 2000 crore rupees is going for scholarship and uh, so my my concern is uh, first thing is see if we even if we see the the the, the allocation for the scholarship uh, allocation within the one minute Within education, the, the major component of the money is going for scholarship only. And uh, there are other heads also, for example, uh, Maulana Azad National Fellowship for minority students, only 99 crore rupees, which uh, Javed Saab has already highlighted. Again, uh, uh, remaining 2000 crores, if, if we see that, uh, then we can find that some, there are a few programs for related, related to livelihood and employment. But this is uh, where my concern is. Because if we see the status of Muslims based on the secondary date, is being allocated with a reflection of the, the status of Muslims in the budget. Uh, largely, if uh, I will not take much time because we are already running, running short of time. This is 5.30. I will take 10 to 15 minutes only. Uh, if we see the secondary data, particularly from the National Sample, Sur uh, sample Survey, then uh, we find that Muslims are uh, like social groups also, like OBCs and uh, high development. Based on the latest national, national sample survey, if, if this is periodic labor force survey, which is on employment, I tried to understand the economic condition of Muslims based on monthly per capita consumption expenditure. And uh, because uh, we, are, we have already passed 15 years after such a committee report, and there has been lots of discussion and uh, debates on the status of Muslims. And of course, we have some programs uh, uh, by the government uh, for improving the condition of Muslims. But despite of all these focuses, all these discussions, the condition of Muslims uh, has not improved yet. Uh, for example, according to the latest PLFS data, the average consumption expenditure, uh, monthly consumption, means uh, the amount of money an individual spend, spends on his consumption expenditure is close to 2,400 uh, on an average for all India. But if we disaggregate the amount by different socio-religious groups, uh, we find that uh, Muslims are still lagging far behind the other communities. It is close to 2000 uh, rupees per month for Muslims. And uh, for if, if we see the most privileged groups, uh, Hindu high caste, it is 3200 rupees, means a gap of 1200 rupees between Muslims and high caste. And uh, uh, Muslims are lagging behind uh, OBCs also, and but their monthly consumption expenditure is close to SCST. Uh, in fact, uh, the average consumption expenditure of ST is uh, slightly lower than Muslims. In terms of poverty, poverty is uh, 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 it has now become a controversial issue, and uh, data has not yet been released. In the month the MPC the consumption expenditure data by NSS, which was about to release in 2017-18, but we are still waiting for that. Uh, if we see the poverty by, I, I, I tried to measure poverty by indirect estimate using the PLFS data, then there is an indication that poverty has increased and it has increased among every religious groups, including Muslims. But uh, one reflection from this data is that uh, in 
2011-12 also Muslims uh, were the most poorest group among the religious groups. And even today, uh, based on the data, uh, PLFS data 2020, Muslims are lagging far behind other religious groups. At all India level, 27% of the total population is below the poverty line. Uh, for Muslims, it is uh, close to 30%. So higher poverty among Muslims. I will uh, go into the detail uh, uh, and I'll try to connect it with uh, the, the coverage of the budget, particularly focusing on schemes and programs. Similarly, if we see the rural urban desegregation of consumption or poverty in rural and urban area, one important observation which comes from the data is that generally we, we assume that, uh, and uh, even in, uh, in, in economic literature, it is uh, generally assumed that uh, urbanization improves the life and being in urban area improves the chance of getting higher income and lower poverty. Of course, this is true for every socio-religious groups, including Muslims. But if we see the advantage of moving from rural to urban areas, then again, the same story uh, comes into the picture. Uh, the advantage of moving to urban area is least among, the, among Muslims. In terms of poverty, if we see the, uh, the, um, the gap means if how much percentage of the poverty, percent point of the poverty re reduces if someone moves from the rural to urban areas, uh, we find that uh, uh, poverty rate in urban area is 14% for um, Hindu high caste. This is point lower than rural areas in, uh, for Hindu OBC, means if Hindu OBCs are in urban area, then uh, their, po their poverty will be uh, close to 15% point lower than their counterparts in rural areas. But for Muslims, for Muslims, uh, 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 this, 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 the, the change is close to 2% only, one to 2% means uh, not much improvement in terms of poverty if, if they move to the urban area. This indicates that the, the uh, generally, uh, again, the literature on economics says that uh, uh, the, high, the benefit of uh, high economic growth is accrued by the urban areas. But even in urban areas, the benefit which uh, generally uh, people from neoclassical economics uh, tell the trickle down effect, the, that this trickle down is least for Muslims. So this is the general picture based on the, uh, uh, the economic condition of Muslims. In terms of higher education, I was talking about uh, the budget and the, the allocation for uh, education. The most in interesting uh, observation from the budget is that the largest amount of the, uh, uh, the money is going for scholarship. Of course, this is, uh, this is, uh, this, this is welcoming, but one of the most uh, uh, important problem for Muslim community in uh, school education because uh, we can we, as we have seen that close to 1500 crore rupees is allocated for pre matric scholarship. But the one uh, if we see the NSS data again the gross attendance rate for uh, every community including Muslims is above 95 percent at elementary level means uh, more than 95 percent of the population in six to 13 14 years are attending school education among every community in India. So we are close to the universalization of school education in terms of attendance, numerically. But uh, when we try to capture the quality of education learning outcome, then disparity again appears. The quality of education is least and learning outcome is least for, uh, uh, for SCST and Muslims. And uh, we don't find any kind of focus in the budget for improving the quality of education for Muslims. There are certain some coaching schemes, but uh, these coaching schemes, first, uh, the coverage is very low. Second, implementation is a problem. Whatever kind of coaching scheme you, uh, one can see. And um, again, uh, these are not con converting the, 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 uh, the, the low learning outcome among the deprived communities, including Muslims. So this would be the first focus. Focus. Second, when if we go 
towards secondary and higher secondary education and higher education, the inequality appears. Muslims, the access is least for Muslims in both secondary and higher secondary education and higher education. I have taken the picture for higher education only. I have calculated the uh, gross attendance rate uh, based on the latest national sample survey data in 2017-18. Uh, level 26% of the 18 to 23 population are attending higher education. But uh, uh, this figure is only 16.6%, means close to 17%, means out of 100 Muslims in 18 to 23 years, only 17 are attending higher education, means college and universities. But at All India, 26% are attending higher education for Muslims. For Hindus, this is uh, close to 28, means gap of 12 percentage point. Um, other minorities, are, of course, they are doing better, better than Muslims and Hindus also. Um, so Muslims are uh, most backward. But uh, when we see the, the, the focus of the budget, uh, we don't find anything special except Maulana Azad National Fellowship, post-metric fellowship. So I think uh, we need a special focus uh, for improving the access of Muslims in higher education and secondary and higher secondary education. Now, I'm coming to the labor market. In labor market, the most important concern is a large section of Muslim community is out of labor force. I will not go into the detail of the data due to lack of time. are not uh, uh, in the in the labor force means they are labor force means those who are willing to join labor force irrespective of whether they are employed or not employed so this is the first decision for getting employed that i want job if i i want job means i am part of the labor force if we compare the situation of different communities muslims are the most backward in terms of this indicator and if we compare the numbers by gender then it is reflected that the the number of muslims is and the share of Muslims is suppressed because of the low share of women among Muslims in uh, willing to join the labor market. And we should, uh, we, I think we should corroborate this data from the, uh, the current controversy going on uh, uh, on hijab. And, uh, and uh, the, uh, I will not go into the, that detail, but you, we can understand the implication. This will further discourage the labor force participation of Muslim women. And uh, and that that must be reflected in in terms of labor force participation. If if if, if uh, uh, we see any kind of adverse outcome from this controversy. And uh, similarly, low uh, employment rate mean, measured by workforce participation participation rate means percentage of the population 15 years and above who are working. Again, Muslims are the most backward community in terms of this indicator. Uh, quality of employment. We can disaggregate employment by different uh, 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 types, self-employed, regular salaried, and casual labor. Regular salaried jobs are considered the best quality job. They are, uh, regular salaried jobs are considered the best quality job. And if we see the share of Muslims in this job, again, uh, uh, their, their share is least. Uh, uh, for example, if I, I can share the data, then uh, for Hindu high caste, 35% of the total workers among Muslims among, are, are in regular salaried job. For Muslims, it is close to 20%. Uh, of course, this is low for uh, other underprivileged groups also, SC and ST. Uh, um, but uh, if you compare the situation from the, uh, the most uh, privileged groups, Hindu high caste, the gap is very high. Self-employment is another important characteristic. They are highly concentrated into the self-employment, means own businesses. And this is a reflection of ghettoization, that they uh, largely they, are, they, they find livelihood in their own ghettos. And uh, there are some programs, uh, uh, one, two flagship programs, but uh, the coverage is very low. And I don't think uh, it has, uh, uh, it will uh, change the situation of, this, uh, of the community if, a special focus is not given. And another thing is that uh, the, the major problem which I, I find from other studies also conducted by me, um, low capital base and uh, high, high uh, uh, concentration into the conventional enterprises. 
particularly trading activities are the major problems of Muslims in, if, if we are talking about uh, self-employment. And uh, so, uh, and uh, we could not find any kind of emphasis on improving the capital base of the, these businesses. And until and unless we, uh, we uh, there is related to improving the capital base and modernization of these businesses, uh, the situation is not going to improve. So, uh, so my uh, my suggestion or my uh, my suggestion should will be that the budget first the coverage of budget should be widened. The amount allocated should be increased, and focus should improving the working condition of the small businesses and Muslims. And in terms of regular salaried employment, uh, we need special programs so that they, we could uh, promote Muslim youths into the modern sectors. Because if we further disaggregate the, the employment among Muslims by industrial categories, we find that uh, their concentration in service sector, which, which, uh, which constitutes close to 70% of the total income, total GDP of the country, the, concent the concentration of uh, workers in of Muslims is further lower. So there should be focus on in increasing presence of Muslim in service sector, modern kinds of enterprises and modern kinds of sectors emerging and um, more presence in startup programs. I think they, they, we need some, some supports related to this. Then uh, another important problem, I, I think this is the last part of the presentation is educated unemployment. If we see employment, then we don't find much gap. But when we disaggregate, it is very high among the Muslim community. For example, uh, um, at all India level uh, in 2019-20, nearly 14% of the, uh, uh, nearly 16% of the uh, total higher edu educated graduates were unemployed. But uh, if we see the situation of Muslim, it is close to 22-23%. Uh, uh, for other community like Hindu high caste, this is close to 13%. For Hindu OBC, this is 17%. Educated unemployment is low, uh, high for SC and ST also, close to 20%. So uh, this is telling that despite getting education, Muslims are not uh, getting employment. And this, again, I, I would say that this problem is a general problem for a higher education graduates in India, but this problem further worsens among Muslims. So a special focus is needed for employing those who are getting higher education. Again, we have some skill development. We don't have any program for improving the employment opportunities for higher education graduate. We need some specific programs related to this. So this is the overall, Uh, um, um, participation because of the low uh, labor force participation among Muslims. And of course, due to this, the so among Muslims, particularly Muslim women, quality of employment is also very low, particularly in regular salary job for small businesses, low working capital, uh, and high concentration into the uh, conventional enterprises, which is not contributing much to the GDP, and uh, which is not uh, attached to the mainstream economy and uh, high educated unemployment. Uh, again, uh, uh, one more thing is that even if, if we see the regular salaried jobs by the level of education, again, we find relatively higher percentage of the regular salaried workers, which the regular salaried worker, which is considered this kind of employment. In that category also, the level of education is low among the Muslims. So this, this is telling that even among the regular salaried workers, the quality of employment is low among the Muslims. So, um, uh, so I think uh, this, these uh, aspects can't be covered with this limited 5,000 crore rupees. There is a need of increasing the amount of the, uh, the allocation for, uh, for the Ministry of Minority Affairs. And there is a need for covering, uh, for creating new kinds of schemes and programs so that uh, the, the problem of the Muslim community, which is uh, revealed from this data is properly addressed. With this, I close my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Khalid Khan, for uh, for your insightful presentation and like presenting all the uh, very specific 
um, uh, places where we need to like focus the um, uh, specific um, places or specific areas where we need to focus uh, in like uh, on the one hand uh, uh, dr javed alab khan has um, portrayed a picture that how uh, budget allocation is like uh, uh, is being made in this uh, latest budget on the other hand you have shown us that how the low budget is impacting the uh, situation of muslims as well as other uh, minority communities uh, in the uh, ground uh, level right so that is the uh, harsh reality that we are seeing um, thank you dr khalid khan again for your uh, wonderful presentation uh, i would like to uh, open the forum for question and answer um, i have uh, some questions but i will not take that the privilege being a moderator but i would like to invite others first to ask the questions so please other participants please ask your questions or you can type it i can read it here uh, whatever you wish to so please you can uh, the open, uh, forum is open for uh, uh, question and answer or discussion uh, in amru sahib uh, dr muhib jahan has raised the hand Achha, achha. Please ask your question, please. please. Assalamu alaikum, sir. So through the data, what has been excellently presented, we have seen that there is a, there is a gap between the allocation, although it is allocated, but it is not utilized. So what as in a Muslim Ummah we should do so that we can increase the utilization of the funds given by the government, which is under utilization. So what, what we, should, like, we should do that people, most of the people are unaware of that. Thank you for your question. Actually, <clears throat> I would say that, uh, you know, like uh, the utilization, uh, the means lack of our poor utilization has several reasons. First one is that uh, the planning processes are too weak. And uh, just I will give one example to you. Like uh, we have MSDP, Multisectoral multi Development Program, which is now called as Janvikas Karikram, PM Janvikas Karikram. So the implementation and planning is done at the block level. There we don't have adequate staff, adequate planner, and also there is a lack of community participation in those projects. So always, you know, like it happens that uh, uh, the plan document, we call it DPR, detailed project report, is prepared late, then sanctioned late, then money release, you know, also become late. So these are the several, you know, like um, stages of uh, means uh, several issues and uh, then that need to be addressed. So some can be addressed through community participation, but some has to be addressed by the government. Uh, for that, we need to do advocacy. <laughs> Awareness is also one of the most important thing, which we civil society can do. And also, Sensitization work we can also do with the government officials, but it needs, you know, like a consistent efforts, not just, you know, like having one event, one program, one meeting. We need to do it for a longer period of time. Javed Saib, can you uh, expand what kind of awareness is needed in the grassroots level? At the grassroots level, I would say that, you know, every scheme requires, you know, like its own uh different kind of mechanism like for msdp i mentioned we need to do some kind of uh, you know like uh, hand holding and uh, meeting with the block level officials where project is coming and we should suggest something that you know like for this block this kind of work is required but for scholarship programs i think mainly students parents and then school colleges are very important for that so we need to uh, formulate different kind of advocacy strategy at that level. Like we have National Commission for this uh, Development Finance and Corporation, so which which is you know like uh, have the objective of the economic empowerment of minorities. So for that you know like we need to see that where it is functioning. Like I know that in UP and Bihar it is totally defunct. But other states like in Haryana, it is, I think, not working very well, but yeah, it is working in Mewar because uh, there is a channelizing agency, Mewar Development Agency. So something is being done. So for that, 
research we have to do some kind of research feedback we have to do and then uh, we have to work with the ngos with the communities so that see like i am not saying that my the you know strategy uh, uh, for the welfare of minorities is the only you know like strategy which is not working for others it is not working just i will give you one example recently i have been part of the uh, review committee of the tribal sub plan which was hosted by the scheduled tribes commission national commission for scheduled tribes so there you know like you can say matlab discrimination is there with muslims yeah it's acute but for others it's there so what happened that they used to review that scheduled caste uh, means uh, scheduled tribes uh, tsp got 90000 crore allocation through general departments 90000 crore for 22 23 okay from its own ministry they have got 8000 crore so they the commission was looking at the implementation of this tsp tribal sub plan so what happened that they invited ministry of health ministry of education ministry of rural development so representative from ministry of rural development they didn't turn out but ministry of ministry from ministry of education from ministry of health they they had attended the meeting but they just share the allocation they were not able to share how much beneficiaries are there under different schemes under this sub plan so there is a regular you know i i would say there is a regular need of monitoring regular pre, regular pressure on the government officials and not just at the union level i think at the state level so for a strategy we need to devise different kind of strategy for implementation for for planning and for policy advocacy so we need to do you know like lot more at different level of government i ask a question yes please i just want to comment uh, what dr javed was uh, saying um i'm aware this is regard to msdp program i know this these programs um, are good allocations are good i'll just give one example of uh, one block in jharkhand uh, which is gande block uh, i'm telling this thing about for some 5 years 6 years back there was an allocation of 9 crores for the project but the officers and the uh, basically local leaders of the community they themselves uh, got some disturbance together for allocation of some works done here or there and this whole project got stuck for 3 years or 4 years so this is our responsibility also at the local level to monitor it uh, what um, was actually pointed out that monitoring and actual observation and some responsible people at the ground level they are required to see whether it is get implemented and actually cleared Uh, this is my observation for this msdp program thank you yeah you are right like uh, you know uh, the jharkhand and uh, up bihar assam west bengal they have the largest project under this msdp jan vikas karyakram but i would say that there is a very much you know like less awareness in these areas about the minority programs so it's a very big tragedy uh, you know muslim muslim community particularly i think uh, has not been, has not been very much interested to get connected with the government programs i know that access to government program is very difficult but since it is our entitlement so we have to do we have to spend some money to at least these for that these program should implemented well otherwise you know like up for for you know scholarship scheme we have at least 2500 crores it, it can be increased further it can be increased and even realization is there in the ministry and also in the niti ayog in the government 
बट देर इज ए नीड फॉर सम प्रेशर पुश सो लाइक वी हैव सेवरल यू नो लाइक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जमात इस्लामी जमियत इन मेनी अदर अदर प्लेटफॉर्म आई थिंक दे शुड ऑल्सो कम फॉरवर्ड फॉर दैट दे शुड ऑल्सो you know like pressure they 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 should meet regularly with these ministries and they request that these are the challenges in allocation these are the challenges in the design problem of this scheme in the implementation in this system like and we have, we have national scholarship portal so what are the challenges in that so there is it is not that only few ngos can do it there should be a kind of you know like uh, uh, collaborative efforts and a sound network up and mute up uh one thing i would like to say again that um, as far as this minority finance development corporation is concerned generally there is a tendency of the state governments not to allot their 25% of quota or share and make uh, to augment the uh, central uh, funding in jharkhand uh, i think it was um, established in 2009 and from 2009 it is 2021 not a single uh, it was not actually activated or nobody was uh, appointed for that particular thing so that there, there may be cases in other states too so how what is the mechanism at grassroots level there should be some civil society some ngos some watchdog kind of thing some think tank at those particular level in states or at district level who could actually monitor and mobilize people sane people sane voices to look after it and uh, get some reports and regularly publish these things in um, the local papers or local news channels so that people get aware this is my uh, concern that what should be uh, taken uh, as far as uh, at community level we are thinking about it because since we are discussing this budget for the community so the community should not uh, keep itself aloof from uh, the happenings what is there and totally rely on the officers and uh, the government and the schemes we have to see that the policy is at least it gets implemented whatever it is though it has many shortcomings please uh, actually i would like to add something here uh, ember india foundation is basically working on two major focus area one is research and other another is uh, empowerment under research we have formed certain groups uh, at national level who could uh, conduct different research activities research on different issues different uh, areas uh, for the empowerment of uh, uh, muslim community and uh, keeping that data with us we uh, or analyzing those data we have formed we have come to a new uh, uh, new uh, initiative like we will be forming chapters in every district we have identified the most uh, backward uh, muslim uh, dominated districts and also uh, the other uh, muslim concentrated districts so what we are doing is we will will be forming chapters in those uh, districts and uh, the chapters formed uh, in such manner uh, will be given assigned uh, will be assigned uh, to implement different awareness program Uh, different uh, uh, to initiate different initiatives at the grassroots level, and also make sure that uh, uh, different uh, uh, scholarship and uh, different schemes, government-run schemes, are uh, run properly. Uh, we, through this chapter, we would like to ensure the participation uh, from the uh, in the grassroots level from the Muslim community. So that's what we are uh, focusing. Uh, that's why I was asking Javed Sai what kind of awareness should be given because we have already listed. Uh, almost ten different awareness program that should be given in different time of a in a year repeatedly, and uh, we, the uh, the chapter also should uh, uh, ensure that a minimum uh, number of initiatives is working in every area, and uh, chapter should also focus uh, should also ensure that certain awareness come initiatives are working like. Uh, Uh, like uh, 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 they should conduct uh, local level uh, surveys on the students and uh, they should try to uh, connect different scholarship schemes with the students uh, they should uh, try to conduct different mass literacy program and we have listed certain things so uh, if possible uh, if you if javed sahib kalsaib and uh, uh, 
the other participants can guide us or uh, give some suggestions on different awareness programs we can include that also and we can make sure that our chapters are uh, we, we can ensure that our chapters are uh, uh, conducting such awareness program at the grassroots level and uh, for ensuring this we are we are doing one more thing we are conducting local level survey also like uh, we have divided all uh, a district into different mohallas and uh, mohalla level we are conducting different survey uh, that uh, how how much uh, initiatives different uh, awareness programs are already conducting in those area by different organization maybe by uh, tablig jamaat bareilly muslims or uh, uh, sunni muslims jamaat islami or any other organization any other uh, active organization and uh, uh, we will identify the gap like what all awareness or initiative is going in, taking place in the grassroots level and we will compare this with our already listed programs and if any gap is there we will uh, try to our chapter will try to initiate that program in the grassroots level uh, just for the information of the participants thank you Uh, any other uh, like uh, queries uh, for uh, by any other participant they can uh, <coughs> ask the yes yeah, assalamu alaikum uh, please uh, my name is asrar khan and uh, actually i have one question okay uh, as javed sahab uh, showed that the graph is reducing the utilization of the fund and the share given by the government for different programs it's decreasing uh, the gap is increasing but funds is decreasing day by day year by year so as per slides uh, i can see that uh, you know, from 2007 or 8 it started but is still the program not reached to grassroots that is one question okay and uh, do you think that eif is doing a good job as uh, <coughs> he said someone was saying okay uh, doing many things to uh, aware the people but in these years i think around 15 years passed and still the grassroots levels muslims are not aware the first thing and uh, second thing <clears throat> nobody uh, pressure to the government to whether this fund is not utilizing uh, the government should uh, run certain programs certain things that the muslims should aware about the these programs and should utilize this funds so one thing government is not allocating the fund second thing there is certain uh, disturbances there so that the funds is not reaching to the uh, the person who is eligible so what the leaders should do because leaders is also not doing anything and from the muslim muslim community who is also uh, becoming the leaders or anything on those who is taking care of the muslim community or also not approaching to the government that funds are not coming to us so that noise should noise should come so why it is not happening because eif is doing good job recently it started uh, eif can reach but all over the uh, all over india it's not possible to reach at a time so my question is that how can it be possible that there should be certain magazines yes, certain yes, sir, yes. papers there's uh, certain Actually, see, information see, technologies like, uh, yeah yeah you are right see like i would say that uh, it is reaching but the pace it should have reached i think that is a problem like uh, i would say that scholarship scheme so uh, there is a data reporting on scholarship scheme that's why i have shown you that uh, uh, in 2020 2021 one crore 10 lakh students have applied for pre post and merit commissions and half of that have got the scholarship i would say that maybe amount, amount was not sufficient maybe half of the amount they have got 20% they have got but they have got something likewise uh, under msdp so under msdp and jan vikas karyakram roughly i can say like since its inception uh, shuruaat hui hai 2007 at se now we are in the 2022 20, 23 20, 20, 20, 20, financial year uh, 21 22 financial year almost uh, like uh, for 13 years Uh, roughly you can say like uh, minister uh, 15000 crore would have been allocated almost okay so some of the you know like uh, districts have got good infrastructure and uh, many of them have also started like operationalized 
लेकिन द पेस यानी आई थिंक दे शुड हैव स्टार्टेड इट लाइक इन टू थाउजेंड सेवन एट आई वुड से वन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ मेवाद आई विजिटेड इन प्रोजेक्ट स्टार्टेड ऑफ पी एच सी सी एस सी इन टू थाउजेंड एट नाइन आई विजिटेड देर टू थ्री ईयर्स सो इट वॉज अंडर कॉन्स्ट्रक्शन अगेन आई विजिटेड इट वॉज अगेन तो फाइव फाइव ईयर्स गॉट लॉस्ट उसके बाद नाउ दे हैव स्टार्टेड बट you know like these projects are the collaborative projects so government of india will give the construction money but other infrastructure supposed to be given by the state government so state government if state government is not interested then you know like uh, uh, the initial thing like operationalization will won't start so i would say that even politicians are doing something politicians are also doing something like many you know like mps are raising this question in the lok sabha in the rajya sabha even recently i have seen you know like two three letters gone to the minister means ministry of minority affairs but there is a problem of intention actually there is a problem of intention so this is the biggest challenge actually but i would say there is a general problem general tendency in india see like uh, the projects which are related to marginalized communities they have the you know like bigger challenge but in other projects i can say in the general programs there is a similar tendency there is a similar problem to hum aisa nahi keh sakte hain ki sirf minorities ke programs mein hi problem hai yahan zyada problem ho sakti hai and about the community awareness i would say we need to do lot more actually or we need to engage with the minority run institutions also not only with ngos we need to work with the uh, colleges schools as well tabhi hum kuch kar payenge matlab hame aisa nahi kehna hai ki hum we are totally disappointed aisa nahi aisa nahi ha yeah got it ha nahi matlab ek cheez main aapko batau ki india ka overall cultural problem और इंडिया में भी वेरी करता है अगर नॉर्थ को आप बात करोगे तो नॉर्थ हैज बिगर चैलेंजेस इन कंपेयर टू साउथ और अगर आप इंडिया में मुस्लिम के डेवलपमेंट की बात करोगे तो मेजर चंक ऑफ मुस्लिम्स आर स्टेइंग इन नॉर्थ इंडिया और वही सबसे ज्यादा बैकवर्ड है तो चैलेंजेस भी वेरी वेरी कर रहे हैं यह भी एक चीज है तो मतलब पूरा कल्चरल प्रॉब्लम है अगर आप If you are working closely with the bureaucracy and this, मतलब uh, executive, तो वहाँ पे सोच ही यही है कि हमें करना नहीं है कुछ ज़्यादा। मतलब societal problem है। No, actually in the West Bengal, what is happening? Uh, there is one program initiated that is Dwarre Sarkar. Uh, I think most of the most of you know about this. So under the Dwarre Sarkar, what happened? One Mela type of program initiated. and uh, local level at the local level so what happened most of the participants means uh, most of the people went there and uh, the in the councilor level or panchayat level it started so the um, general public uh, used to go there and uh, there are certain several schemes so they applied for that and most of the them uh, got it so like that uh, if the local people or local uh, like uh, those who take in those who uh, who are the leaders or Uh, NGOs or any other bodies who take care, who do these kind of things like mela type of things, and there are certain schemes are going on. Then I think uh, the participation will increase. The first thing is the participation should increase, and second thing the pressurization of the government is uh, uh, necessary. So that after that we can pressurize on government that we want these things. So that that the kind of thing is not happening in the ground level. जावेद साहब यू आर म्यूटेड देखिए ये स्कीम्स है हमें हमारी मेजरली अब वी नीड टू माई पिट हाउ मेनी स्कीम्स आर गोइंग टू दी ग्राम ग्राम पंचायत लेवल हाई मेन हाउ मेनी स्कीम्स आर गोइंग अप टू डिस्ट्रिक्ट लेवल हाउ मेनी स्कीम्स आर गोइंग अप टू स्टेट लेवल एंड कितनी जो है वो इस सेंट्रल लेवल पे है लाइक स्कॉलरशिप प्रोग्राम तो एन एस पी में आपके प्री मैट्रिक पोस्ट मैट्रिक मेरिट का मीन्स है so we need to do some kind of mapping or aap jo bol rahe hain that can be done 
that can be done and uh, we 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 can select some gram panchayas not all and uh, we we need to do something with them if we will be able to do you know like make some su successful stories that can be replicated wo cheez kiya ja sakta hai aapke yahan kya hai top down approach hai government is doing something it's good and it's a welcome initiative but isko lekar ke hum log baith sakte hain in future ki kaise kaun sa kya kiya ja sakta hai तो स्कीम्स ऑलरेडी डिवाइज हैं, गाइडलाइंस आर देयर, मनी इज देयर तो उस बीच में कैसे करना है अब जैसे स्कॉलरशिप स्कीम्स हैं, तो वो तो कॉलेज स्कूल लेवल पे पेरेंटल लेवल पे ही हम लोगों को करना है अब उसमें ग्राम पंचायत भी रोल प्ले कर सकता है बिल्कुल कर सकता है ग्राम सभाओं में वो तो हो सकता है थैंक यू साहब माई सेल्फ मोहम्मद सलीम खान फ्रॉम राजस्थान सर एक्चुअली ऑल द अवेयर पेरेंट्स आर लुकिंग फॉर प्राइवेट एजुकेशन यू नो दे सेंड देयर चिल्ड्रेन इन प्राइवेट स्कूल्स एंड इन प्राइवेट स्कूल्स दे आर ऑलरेडी स्पेंडिंग ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी थाउजेंड ऑन देर एजुकेशन इन लोअर क्लासेस इफ यू टॉक अबाउट अप टू एट क्लासेस दे आर ऑलरेडी पेइंग दे आर अबाउट ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी फाइव टू थर्टी थाउजेंड and the, what they are getting as a scholarship it's about 1000 like this you know so if uh, as uh, they they may think that uh, if we are already spending such a huge amount so uh, mm -hmm. what will happen if we uh, what will happen if we get or not about 1000 and even we have to do a so, uh, lot of formalities also right and <laughs> after doing a lot of formality it's it's not sure that we will get or not so that may be the reason and if parents who are already sending government schools so they are uh, backwards so they they are not so much aware of the schemes so that uh, that may be also problem uh, uh, your 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 suggestion your reason is very much genuine because there is a very less minuscule amount of allocation uh, under for each child so there is a disincentive i agree with you and i would tell you that once upon a time one of the member two of the member parliament they just you know like uh, written to the minister and then also in the discussion of the parliamentary related standing committee they uh, put the their proposal proposal was published but uh, you know like nothing is <clears throat> happening after that so people have made the efforts and uh, i would say that it is not the matlab problem with the minority schemes only this amount okay. problem is with sc scholarship even st scholarship so matlab there is a general problem in general just thoda sa fark ho sakta hai ki kahin pe jo hai ha 1000 hai kahin 1500 hai but so or and there is a yeah means uh, i'm giving the reason why we are not filling the forms and uh, why we are getting less means i'm giving, true, maybe true. yeah maybe this is the uh, thinking in mind if we, we do so so much formality and uh, even it's, it's not uh, guaranteed that we will get or not and if we even we get this is very less in comparative whatever we are spending so why we should do such type of things maybe thank you to uske to uske liye hame karne karna padega na we ha right 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 no i am not the advocacy of the government ha ministry of finance ko ministry of minority affairs ko niti aayog ko national commission for minorities ko we need to you know like meet them we need to put our grievances before them i think that has to be done regularly not just in, uh, once in a year regularly we have to do it yeah yeah sure thank you yeah in number by musa sahib has raised the hand mohammad musa <coughs> so ah, please please welcome sir please ask your oh, question oh actually uh, my question is to javed khan sir uh, so you have shown the uh, graphs on the number of students getting scholarship or applications so if we get it uh, category wise i mean male and female because in the last 10 decade uh, last 10 years the number of female students have increasingly uh, i mean uh, steeply increased and especially in higher educations even among the muslims and uh, so what are the figures 
in, in case of SC and STs, uh, SCs are moving much fast as compared to STs and Muslims. But what are the expenditure? I mean, the uh, allocation of fund through the scholarship for Muslim male and female. It is not there. If it's available, so. Uh, ah, yes, yes, yes. I got your point. See, see, yeah. see, like, see. And, sir, see uh, like, uh, another thing, another thing, please. Uh -huh. Let me complete, then uh -huh. you'll. Uh, uh -huh. It is not a question because one man cannot do everything. I'm just uh, uh, asking you if it is available, so you may provide it. And another thing is that uh, there are many more schemes you have shown. And that's actually, it is a good presentation. And uh, even I have completed my MPL on education mobility of Muslim in rural West Bengal. And I'm from Tata Institute of Social Science and doing my PhD on liver migration. So uh, it's very striking uh, that you have mentioned and your presentation is very um, excellent. So another thing is that when we are uh, evaluating any scheme or monitoring any, uh, not monitoring, not evaluating, evaluation of a scheme. So uh, some schemes are for the block, Muslim blocks, I mean the minority concentrated blocks. So the expenditure of the funds, a particular, uh, particular funds to a particular geographical area. And uh, so there are many blocks which are uh, the, where the Muslims percentage, percentage is very high, more than 50%, 25%. But the particular fund is going to particular organization which does not belong to minority group. The block is minority concentrated, but the organization or the institute which getting the money, they are not specially dealing with the minority populations. So that's to be, that, that is very true and even in the just before the election of West Bengal, last uh, uh, Sabha elections, it has happened a lot. And insofar I know, I did not do any uh, scientific study or research or like that, but some people are with me in contact. So I came to know that this kind of things happening in Bengal, even it may have, may, may, might be happening in other parts of the, our country because the uh, such kind of funds are being handled by the bureaucrats. So we, we cannot um, uh, order them or <laughs> instruct them because it is beyond our reach. So uh, this kind of gap is to be uh, noticed and academically, uh, I mean, documented. So that will be more effective because if we, uh, if we even what you today um, presented here, many things were not known to me or maybe to other persons. So uh, such kind of discussion is very uh, essential for us. And uh, it's to be, and I request to empower in the foundation to continue such kind of debate and especially the academic debate. And Khalid Khan also is there. So he has also a great expertise in many things. So I request all of you and to focus on such things. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So just, you know, like very briefly, uh, there is a you know like uh, provision in the guideline of scholarship schemes that at least 33 percent should go to the women candidate girls girls student but uh, the as per the data provided by the ministry roughly 54 percent of girls are getting the share in the total scholarship dispersed by the ministry of minority affairs 54 percent dusra sawal jo aapka tha there is a program like uh, free coaching scheme there is a program like skill development. There is a program like women leadership development program. So these programs are going uh, through the NGOs only, coaching institute NGOs only. So for that, you know, like those organizations who have good connection with the ministry, they are able to pay something more with, you know, like uh, through good relation. So they are getting the, you know, projects and they are getting the, uh, money from the ministry. It's a fact. You are right in that. And uh, let's, you know, do some kind of research on these three aspects, like this uh, free coaching, uh, women leadership program, and skill development program. And roughly, I can say like uh, seven to 800 crores are disbursed to the NGOs only. You are right. <laughs>
Uh, if you permit, can I ask one more question? Yeah, uh, please, please, uh, very briefly. Yeah. Uh, actually, in India, I think uh, there are 32, 33 estates. So my question is that uh, from Khalid Khan, uh, the states like uh, Odisha, Bihar, and uh, Jharkhand, these are the states which are uh, not that, that much developed states. And the states like Karnataka, Andhra, and Tamil Nadu. So there, these states are far better than these um, Odisha, Bihar. Okay. So Muslim labor participation participation is less. So is there anything anything that uh, these states are doing well? Muslims are doing Muslims labor participation are well, or in these states, the poor states where uh, Muslim participation are good. Is there any study or uh, what we can say? Uh, suppose if poor states are doing performing uh, labor in poor states, if labor participation is less, it means we can say that the social or economic uh, relation is there. And if uh, the other side, the developed state where the participation is also, also less, so because of that uh, state's issue or because of uh, educational or economical condition issues. So is there anything, uh, any studies in, on that? Yes, <clears throat> there are some studies on labor for participation and for work force participation. And uh, most of the studies focus on women, uh, of course, there are other other groups also like uh, SCS team and Muslims, but uh, labor force participation or uh, WPR workforce participation. I think uh, uh, if if someone interprets it, uh, we have to be very sensitive because it uh, it indicates both aspects. It may be a good sign. It may be a bad sign also because uh, in poor households. Um, um, high labor force participation or workforce participation may happen because the people are compelled to participate in the in the in the workforce because, uh, due to low income and in fact uh, there are large num there are evidences that in rural areas and of course I mean, clear evidence the in rural areas the participation of women is high particularly from the underprivileged groups and this uh, high participation for underprivileged groups is uh, true for uh, urban area also, like SCST, um, because uh, of their uh, poor condition, women are compelled to join labor force, and of course, by uh, if they get job workforce. But for for Muslim community, and, and actually this is uh, paradoxical and uh, interesting as well, that uh, despite uh, being economically backward, the, the workforce participation or labor force participation is relatively low. If we compare the situation by socio-religious groups, one is uh, uh, what one may 